Uh, all right, talking about this married system of fuel cell, electrolyzer, and battery. With more research and incentives, we can break our dependence on oil and become the first country to have a million electric vehicles on the road by 2050. We need to get behind this innovation. And to help pay for it, I'm asking Congress to eliminate the billions in taxpayer dollars we currently give to oil companies. Bob Aronson, uh, Chairman and CEO of Apollo Energy Systems. Uh, we're developing uh, new batteries and fuel cells for electric cars. Uh, our battery is uh, a, what we would call a tripolar lead cobalt battery, uh, which will replace lithium ion batteries in the future. Uh, the battery uh, has, a, has about the same weight and energy density of lithium ion, but uh, it would cost about 20% of lithium ion, and also uh, can be fast charged. Uh, no problem with uh, our, our battery in uh, as far as uh, uh, overheat, uh, fire, and explosion uh, that is common with lithium batteries. Uh, we've been in the battery business and fuel cell business for many years. Uh, our roots in the battery business go back to 1953 uh, uh, when we had our first uh, battery plant in Puerto Rico for 10 years and then a battery plant in New Orleans for six years. Uh, we were in Detroit for 16 years making batteries and electric cars. Uh, General Motors uh, purchased one of our electric cars called the Mars II and had it tested for over a year and found that it had a range of 146 miles on a charge. Uh, with the new battery in that car, the range would be 350 miles on a charge. Uh, our batteries uh, have been used not only in over 100 full-size uh, uh, electric vehicles. There was uh, one race in 1968 and one in 1970 and the, uh, the winning vehicles in those cars had our batteries. The batteries were recharged at Holiday Inns along the way, every uh, 7,500 miles uh, in about 45 minutes. And uh, this, this was something new uh, to the uh, electric car industry, uh, having a battery that could be recharged uh, so rapidly. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, we won both of those races. Uh, the fuel cell is something that uh, we're now going to be adding to the battery. Uh, when we uh, have an electric car with a battery, it has a, a, a certain range. Uh, for example, uh, 146 miles in the Mars II, uh, 350 miles with the new battery in the Mars II, but at the end of uh, that time why you'd have to stop and recharge. With the fuel cell, uh, you don't have to, to stop and recharge because the fuel cell uh, acts as an onboard charger and keeps the battery charged at all times. So as long as the fuel cell is operating, why the battery stays charged and the vehicle can keep running. The fuel cell works on hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen uh, Comes from uh, could come from uh, water, uh, which is electrolyzed, or could come from uh, ammonia, NH3, and of course oxygen uh, comes from the air. 20% of the air is oxygen. So by feeding oxygen and hydrogen into the fuel cell, the fuel cell then produces electricity continuously and charges the battery continuously, so the battery never needs to be recharged. Therefore, the range uh, on a, a full-size uh, uh, car, such as the Silver Volt electric car, uh, would, uh, with a 30 uh, kilowatt uh, uh, fuel cell and a 42 kilowatt hour battery, would have a range 
of, 100, of 480 miles on 26 gallons of ammonia or water if we use the electrolyzer. Uh, well, most of the auto industry, as a matter of fact, 74 automakers have announced that they will introduce electric cars. Some of them have already done so, such as uh, General Motors with the Chevy Volt and uh, Nissan with their Leaf car and Tesla uh, with its uh, car. And uh, these cars, uh, these newer cars, and most of the 74 automakers are planning to use the lightest battery that they can find. Auto, auto makers always want to use something light, as light as possible in their car. Well, the lightest battery around is a lithium battery. Uh, it's very light, and it, it also is, is very powerful. Uh, lithium batteries are, are used in, in cell phones, and they're used in laptop computers. Uh, they're small. The battery that we have used over the years in our electric cars is a tripolar lead cobalt battery uh, which uh, was tested by General Motors in 1967 and shown to have a, a, a range of 146 miles and that was 1967 and here's their test. The battery that, that that, that gave us that kind of performance was what we call a tripolar lead cobalt battery, which is this battery in which the plates are connected to one another in six places, two places at the top and four at the bottom. So we have six current collectors in the cell. Now this has done a great job for us over the years. But now, all of a sudden, everybody wants a lighter battery, a lithium battery. So we have developed something that will uh, compete with the lithium battery. The weight of this uh, uh, grid, which is part of, which goes into the lead cobalt battery, uh, if you'll check here, you'll see that this weighs 4.67 ounces. Now we've come up with with a lead foam grid. This is the same the same size, which will be much lighter and will compete with the lithium. And the weight of this, as you can see, is 0 0.700. In other words, this is one-sixth of the weight of this. Now this, the weight of this, is equivalent to the weight of a, of a grid in a lithium battery. So here we have the same, we can build a battery with lead foam that will weigh the same, have the same weight as a lithium battery and have the same power, energy density, power density as a lithium battery. Now what's the difference then? Why would somebody choose lead, uh, lead cobalt battery rather, uh, a lead foam battery uh, rather than a lithium battery? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, the cost of this battery is 20% of the cost of lithium battery. So it's much, much uh, less expensive. Uh, and that's, that's a huge big factor uh, for the for the auto industry. So instead of subsidizing yesterday's energy, let's invest in tomorrow's. In, in this container, you would have three cells. You have, you have your bus bars at the bottom, and you have your uh, two bus bars at the top and four bus bars at the bottom. That's your tripolar construction. Mm -hmm. And you have this uh, is a this is a a lead cobalt cell. Okay, and three of those go in, and all together equals the, the weight of a lithium battery, equals the output of a lithium battery, is a, a fraction of the cost, one-fifth the cost, right? 20% of, of the cost. So if a, if a lithium battery 
costs a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. This lead foam battery would cost twenty dollars. Amazing. And of course, you're not uh, constrained to this configuration. You can have uh, these configurations over here, uh, which uh, can uh, make a, a better use of uh, uh, card uh, volume dynamics. Uh, uh, maybe you can uh, put these batteries inside panels and have more room uh, within the chassis of the car for other things. Yes, they can be they can be stacked up. Uh, all right, talking about this married system of fuel cell, electrolyzer, and battery. 30 volt, 5 kilowatt fuel cell is connected to a battery. You see here the switch. Now we're connecting a fuel cell to this battery. This is a 24 volt uh, battery. The electrolysis is created by uh, the fuel being water and some metals. Uh, to give you an example, uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can understand chemical electrolysis uh, in the laboratory by taking a beaker of water, adding some potassium hydroxide for uh, conductivity, and then uh, throwing into into this uh, solution uh, s some uh, strips of aluminum. Now, when you throw aluminum into this beaker of water and KOH, you'll find bubbles coming up, and those are oxygen and hydrogen bubbles. So you're getting oxygen and hydrogen from not water, but from the aluminum. Now. That's, that's called chemical electrolysis. Now electrical electrolysis is something different. Let's say you have the same beaker of water with some uh, potassium hydroxide in it. Now you have a battery, and here's the negative post and here's the positive post. You run a wire from the positive post and, and another wire from the negative post into the beaker of water. So now you have two wires connected to a battery in this water, and bubbles come off uh, both the ends of both wires. Well, what, what are we getting? Oxygen and hydrogen. This is an alkaline fuel cell that operates on hydrogen and oxygen. And hydrogen goes in here, oxygen goes in here. Actually, air goes in here because air uh, contains uh, oxygen, 20% of the air is oxygen. You have the air coming in here, and that's your oxygen, hydrogen coming in here, and then potassium hydroxide is circulated through the system, which starts back here and ends up here and is pumped through the system. This is a five, five kilowatt uh, fuel cell. And that's more than enough to run a bus, right? <laughs> well, a small bus, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, how much does this weigh? Uh, 86 pounds. This could also go in a car as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, this, this, this would go into a car. Do you think you get the size <clears throat> down? You can make it as small as you want or as large as you want. So the little green car out there, how, how big do you think you need? This is, this is what would go in the little green car, which we call a Mars 5. Silver Volt, we made 14 of them in, uh, in Detroit. Now that's a that's a heavier car. So you say there was a there's a potential of 480 miles with the new si battery system you have today for that car. What would it be for a lighter car like this one? This is a small car, uh, so you can't put a lot of battery and a lot of fuel cell in a small car because you have limited mm -hmm. limited space. But by putting our new battery and fuel cell in this little car. The range would be 180 miles, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'd have to to uh, uh, fill up with uh, with ammonia, 10 gallons of ammonia, and then you could go another 180 miles, or 10 gallons of water uh, if we had an, an electrolyzer uh, instead of an ammonia cracker on board the vehicle. Do you think you could you could fit an electrolyzer into a car this size yeah, as well? So that's three units. Yeah, electrolyzer is about. Uh, 
uh, 21 inches tall, 12, 12 inches wide, 12 inches deep, mm -hmm. uh, and and we could we could change the shape of it uh, as long as we have the same amount of cubic space. Mm -hmm. So the electrolyzer could easily go in the trunk of this car, Nissan, that has an electric car that's all battery, 100% battery, no engine at all, mm -hmm. and uh, the performance of that car. Uh, is 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 less than the performance of our Mars 2 electric car in 1967. We made a comparison of, uh, of all the performance parameters, and uh, the Mars 2 electric car that we built in 1967, we, we made 45 of them, incidentally, has better performance than today's Nissan, uh, which is all electric with uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, when, when we finish the development of our, of our new battery, why then we will uh, send performance uh, data and uh, Navy uh, uh, certification tests to Nissan and to all the other, the other auto companies that, are, uh, that have announced that they're going into electric cars. For example, there are uh, 74 automakers around the world that have announced that they're going to be producing electric cars. And when we finish our development here, why we will let them all know what we've got. And uh, several of them have already been here to see us. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just waiting for us to finish the new battery. Mm -hmm. And then we hope that, that our battery could replace uh, the batteries uh, that, that are in, in the Chevy Volt and also Fisker Automotive in California. I think we called all their cars, and uh, when our new battery is in production, why we will be able to uh, replace those batteries, those lithium-ion batteries. With At that battery. point, maybe 16 percent of the lithium-ion battery. Right now, it would cost about 20 percent of the lithium-ion battery. Well, that's really pretty remarkable. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer for people who are interested in your company, wouldn't you think? Yes, yes, and if, of course the battery could be uh, fast charged as well. Uh, lithium ion batteries cannot be fast charged. They would uh, overheat, they'd be subject to thermal runaway, uh, fire and explosion. So you could, you could not uh, put uh, uh, very uh, large currents through a lithium ion battery, but we can do that in our batteries. We've done that for years and years and prove that time and time again. So the, the first proof was in those two cross-country races between Caltech and MIT in 1968 and 1970, when the cars were driven across the country, fast charged at Holiday Inns in 45 minutes, and uh, proved the, the concept uh, uh, really, really worked very well. Uh Oh, wonderful that Holiday Inn uh, support uh, still manifests today. Is that correct? They're gonna you yes. plan a, you plan to actually uh, make an excursion uh, across the country. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, we have five silver volt electric cars here. What you've created here is a lead cobalt battery with le with new lead foam design. That's a, a lighter battery comparatively to other lead acid batteries and comparable to the weight and output of a lithium battery, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and lead is far more plentiful on this earth than lithium. All right, well we have five of these silver volt electric cars and we plan to install our new tripolar lead cobalt batteries in them and uh, drive them from here to Washington, D.C., and from there on to Los Angeles, California, and then back, uh, charging at Holiday Inns every 200 or 250 miles, fast charging, uh, and continuing on. And uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, at each, uh, in each major city, uh, we plan to have a press conference. So who are you inviting to the press conferences? To the, the, the local media and uh, governors of the state. In these five cars, the, there will be four four persons in each car, the driver and three passengers. Uh, so the four times five cars is 20 persons, 
and on each leg of the trip, we hope to have a different set of, of, uh, of drivers and passengers, uh, high-profile people if we can get them, and uh, media people. Uh, I hope I can come. Well, you're, you're invited to be either a driver or a passenger. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Can we? Is it possible to to uh, get one of the uh, of the uh, newer electric cars to come along too? After the trip is, has been made, uh, and we've, we've, uh, we've gone from here to Washington, D.C., and then to Los Angeles and back, uh, then we will challenge uh, all uh, makers of electric cars to a cross-country race, uh, including General Motors and uh, Ford and Chrysler and uh, Nissan and Tesla and and Fisker and all the other people who are uh, making electric cars will try to try to challenge them to a cross-country race. Uh, That's exciting. So the challenge is on. The challenge, the challenge will be made at that time. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Okay, and uh, very importantly, you're also interested in regenerative braking, and you feel that you can get back uh, at least 20%. Is that what you were saying? Well, on regenerative braking, the, uh, during uh, deceleration, uh, when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal and then the car goes into a deceleration mode, the electric motor becomes a generator and charges the battery. Now, in, in uh, stop and go traffic, in city traffic, uh, uh, you could possibly get as much as 20% additional uh, uh, range. Uh, be, because uh, every time you, you, you stop at a stoplight while well, you're getting charged back into the battery. Uh, on uh, long trips, uh, why you, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, uh, have that much of advantage because you don't, you don't stop and start. So uh -huh. stopping and starting is what would give you an extra 20%.